A game where I get to play as my favorite hero? That's a great idea. I sure hope they don't butcher it. What's up, everybody? I'm Ricky with Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things superhero games always f up. For this list, we'll be discussing the most common and infuriating mistakes that superhero games tend to repeat. Who's ready for some super screw-ups? Number 10. Overusing the same weapon or mechanic. When I find you, you're dead. Yeah, we get it. The mechanic you came up with is cool. But make us savor it. One of the pitfalls many superhero games fall victim to is relying on repeated gimmicks. One example of this was Batman Arkham Knight, where the Dark Knight could transform the Batmobile into a freaking tank. Some players didn't mind this, but others felt as if the car was stapled to them for most of the experience. From this vantage point, puzzles, combat, and exploration felt less like I'm Batman and more like a bad Spy Hunter reboot. It was a feature that quickly grew stale, even causing some players to bail early. Of course, Arkham Knight is just one of many guilty titles. Number 9. Being a standard beat-em-up Don't get us wrong, we love a good beat-em-up game. A few choice X-Men arcade cabinets have forced us to cough up more quarters than we're proud to admit. However, with so many other superhero titles resorting to this tried-and-true formula, the genre quickly grows stale. It's gotten to the point where a beat-em-up feels like the go-to default path of least resistance come video game adaption time. We need superhero games that do more than just beat those baddies. As the films and comics have proven, superheroes needn't be homogenous. And the more they subscribe to a formula, the less special they become. Besides, not every hero is about beating the snot out of criminals. Number 8. Bland Game Worlds You heard Whitney Chang. Some people are grateful to the Carnage Killer. I kinda know how they feel. There have been many superhero games that suffer from dull environments and level design. Sometimes, it makes you question whether the devs looked at any of the source material outside of the characters. Viewing a movie or reading a comic will show that every hero has their own unique world, from the architecture of buildings to numerous landmarks they visit. There's more to a character's world than just recreating New York City, or worse, copy and pasting buildings in random spots. Devs shouldn't be afraid of getting creative with a hero's world. Just look at the Batman Arkham games as a roadmap for doing it right. Lights out, rich boy. Number 7. Ugly Character Designs And it was awesome! The Avengers were everything I imagined. Despite repeated disappointment, a superhero title comes along that we can't help but get excited about. But how many times, upon release, were you specifically devastated by the horrifying way your beloved hero had been rendered? We've all been there before, whether it was bugged out eyes, awful facial animations, or worse, the uncanny valley. Then, there are games trying to replicate their movie counterparts, which almost always fail to generate the desired results. Graphics aren't everything, but ugly character models can genuinely ruin the experience. How can you enjoy a game when Superman's head looks like the work of Dr. Frankenstein? Number 6. Integrating Other Heroes Have you ever heard of the phrase, there's too many cooks in the kitchen? It has many applications, but it signifies too many people involved. In this particular case, we're talking about too many heroes squeezing into one game. This can make it trickier to write a coherent story, especially if you want to include all of the fan favorites. This may also cause some headaches when adjusting the game's balance, resulting in broken gameplay. Granted, everyone wants to see their favorite hero make it into a video game, but unfortunately, that comes at a cost. And would you rather that small dose of clumsily executed fan service or genuinely good superhero games? Number 5. Balancing a hero's strengths with video game mechanics. We have a 1011 unit responding on the scene. This may be hard to believe, but there are some superheroes who just can't be replicated with traditional game design. Take Superman, for example. 
On top of flying, heat vision, and icy breath, Superman is nigh invincible. How on earth do you make a game where Superman retains this ability while also making it possible for the player to lose? A few games have taken unique approaches to combat this issue, but most have failed to make the grade, offering excuses for diminished abilities rather than exploring genuinely alternative gameplay approaches. As much as we enjoy the familiarity of conventional design, we need to start thinking of unconventional ways to make superheroes work in video games, especially if we continue factoring in godlike powers. Number 4. Wrong Genres Not every superhero has found themselves weaseled into another standard beat-em-up game. In fact, there have been many games that have taken their characters into noticeably different genres, but that isn't to say they were the right choices. Can you imagine the X-Men being in a top-down shooter? Well, it happened. How about a text adventure game of the Hulk? That was a thing too. We can appreciate the effort in trying something different, but there are some ideas that have been implemented that were clearly too outlandish to make sense. The source material has to reflect in the game, and some of these just didn't get the picture. Number 3. Licensing Problems Right behind you. Oh, such power. I have the speed of the tiger. One of the most harrowing tasks of developing a superhero game is following the rules of the license. Almost every little decision must be approved by executives who may or may not be familiar with the source material. The process can be increasingly agonizing when said executives sit on decisions for weeks or make absurd demands. How do you know these executives are making the right decisions? You don't. And if they reject an idea, it can cost developers a lot of time. This is how we got Superman 64, people. Number 2. Being a movie tie-in game Crawling out of Med Bay now. You are one tough son of a Try and get to the point. I'll meet you there. On my way. Let's get something straight. Not every movie needs its own video game. Thankfully, this isn't as frequent of an issue as it used to be, but it's still worth mentioning. Movie tie-ins are notorious for being cobbled together in a painfully short amount of time, often resulting in games that are riddled with bugs. This is why many superhero games like Iron Man and Thor God of Thunder found themselves on worst of lists. They were only made to capitalize on their blockbuster movies. The lesson here is simple. Don't make a superhero game for money. Do it because you like the hero and the money will follow. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Alright, back to business. Number 1. Failing to capture what makes the hero awesome Everything in this list contributes to this problem. Most of the games we've mentioned or have shown suffered because no one bothered asking what makes this character awesome. The sooner you answer that, the sooner you can focus on the next goal, the player experience. Good superhero games make the player feel as if they're truly inhabiting the hero, whether it's swinging around New York as Spider-Man or using gadgets to silently take down enemies as Batman. A superhero game needs to be something unique, not just a reskin of an existing model. You can't just reuse assets and expect the recognizable branding to do the rest. Like other creative works, superheroes require a lot of thought, imagination, and most importantly, time. Let's see if the coin thinks you're telling the truth. So yeah, most superhero games suck, but the good news is that they're getting a lot better. Case in point, check out this video over here to find out why Spidey is the best superhero for a video game. I swear I've spent like 100 hours swinging around Manhattan, it's glorious.